Hey everybody, today is Thursday, May the 17th, and you are watching FCM Prime News, where we deliver to you news from a perspective that matters to you. All the facts, no narratives, never any alternative facts. I'm Trezene, host of Prime News, and happy to be with you all this evening. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube and Facebook channels. They are at forward slash the fifth column network on both platforms and if you're more into twitter you can subscribe to our channels on there and periscope which is at fcn underscore one uh a little thing of housekeeping the fifth column network has been going strong for eight months and has produced more than 250 episodes in both its fall and spring seasons thus far but just as regular network and cable tv has seasons that come to an end for the summer prime news will also come to an end for the spring season and this season finale would be uh, our last episode Thursday uh, May the 31st so don't worry there will be a summer news show and it's going to be fresh and fun so you'll just have to make sure that you like and subscribe to all our platforms so you do not miss out on a thing you should also follow me on Twitter at Trezene I'm always on there tag me in news stories and such I really love it when y'all do that all right y'all know what's up first it's always crime and justice news so the first story for tonight a jury has sentenced two brothers to life in prison for murdering their parents and their three siblings yes in 2015 two brothers in broken arrow oklahoma committed this very gruesome murder spree this last Friday, jurors recommended that Michael Bever, age 19, get a life sentence with the possibility of parole for the killings after being convicted on Wednesday. This recommended sentence is in fact a little slightly lighter than the one was given to his older brother, Robert Bever. He got life after pleading guilty in 2016, but he did not get parole. Big brother Bever, who has been diagnosed with mental illness, testified during his young brother's trial and took responsibility for the stabbing deaths. He said that he didn't witness his younger brother do any of the attacking. But prosecutors say that little brother Bever nonetheless was partially responsible for the killings after younger brother Christopher, age seven, and the little sister Victoria, five, they escaped into the bathroom. He convinced them to unlock the bathroom door, which of course led them to their stabbing death. He is also accused of helping plot the killings. Brother Daniel Bever, age 12, also passed away in the attacks and the father David, age 52, and the mother April, age 44, and another sister who's now 16, she survived getting attacked and testified in the trial against uh, the little brother. He was already sentenced to 28 years in prison for helping to attack her. In Arizona, a woman has been charged with stalking after allegedly sending a former date about eh, 65,000 text messages. And guess where they found her when they made the arrest? She was in his house taking a bath. <laughs> it all started with a date that apparently happened in 2017. The victim told police that he met Miss Jacqueline AIDS through an online dating site. There wasn't going to be a second date though, but AIDS allegedly would not let him go. She began stalking him last summer. He reportedly called the cops when he found her parked outside of his house. Officers, they merely escorted her away. Things escalated when AIDS started to send threatening text messages to him. She texted him stuff about bathing in his blood. Uh, she texted him anti-Semitic slurs against him and even called herself the new Hitler. Uh, there was also calls to police in December, but cops couldn't really find the suspect. Then came April the 8th when the man was out of the country, but had a surveillance system set up in his home. He called the police, telling them that it showed this crazy woman was in his house. When the cops arrived at the scene, they found her taking a bath. Um, isn't this the backstory of Lorna Morello and her beloved Christopher in The Orange is the New Black? It sounds completely ripped from that storyline. Anywho, AIDS was locked up after this, but reportedly got released again. And authorities claim she was a no-show for several court dates. Uh, this culminated in her allegedly showing up at the victim's place of work, claiming to be his wife. After that, she is now locked up without bond on charges of stalking, threatening and intimidating, and harassment by communication. The man, who was the victim, told cops he would get up to 500 texts a day from her. AIDS allegedly told police she only sent the threatening messages because she didn't want him to leave. Crazy. Um, authorities say that a 35-year-old woman and her alleged accomplice drove almost 13 hours and across state lines to abduct a boy she met through Xbox Live. The investigation started in mid-April when the teen's father called the local sheriff's office to say that he returned home from work to find his son missing 
and he was unable to get in touch with him via his cell phone or through his friends. After investigating the boy's cell phone data, investigators determined that the device had been on Interstate 40 and call logs show that morning it had contacted a phone number all the way from New Mexico. Deputies were able to trace the number to Kristen Aragon, age 35, and get local cops over to her house to confront her as she pulled into the driveway of her home with the teen. He was alive and was reunited with his father in New Mexico. What police discovered after questioning the boy led police to arrest Aragon on charges of kidnapping, conspiracy to commit a felony, human trafficking, and abducting a child under the age of 15 for a crime of moral turpitude. According to the teen, he met her through Xbox Live and she began texting him after she asked for his phone number. Their conversations became sexual. The teen allegedly said that he told her that he was 17, but then told her his true age. And even so, he said Aragon wanted to pick him up in her car, but she didn't tell him she lived all the way in New Mexico. So she picked him up and once he got inside the car, she told him, you are never coming back to your home. The teen said Aragon was accompanied by a second woman named Melissa Goals, age 29, who has also been charged with kidnapping and conspiracy to commit a felony and human trafficking. Federal charges are also possible. The 14 year old claimed Aragon made it a point to hide him, telling him to remove the SIM card from his phone and toss it out the window and ordered him to duck whenever they passed through a toll booth. The teen said Aragon sexually abused him several times, groping him twice and performing oral sex on him. He said that when he asked to be returned home, she said no and that either he'd go with them or they'd dump him off naked on the side of the road. I will never know or understand what a 14 year old boy could ever do for a grown ass woman. Never ever understand. This past Mother's Day was uh, tragic for a family of three in Stockton, California. News reports say that five-year-old Kayleen and her 22-year-old parents, Joe Lore and Gina Zhang, were gunned down and killed inside of a home during a Mother's Day celebration. Police have said that they have no motive on this case, but investigators say that the shots came from outside of the house. Local news reports the father died at the scene and the mother and child died at the hospital later that day. Two others present in the home at the celebration were injured as well. Uh, this type of case, the circumstances are very extremely rare and extremely heartbreaking, said Stockton Police Chief Eric Jones. Jones vowed to get justice for the family and has placed police outside the home for surveillance to prevent any type of retaliation. Uh, a GoFundMe campaign has been set up for family and has raised nearly $9,000 uh, by this past Tuesday morning. If you've been on social media at all, you've seen all the memes of a woman on the phone uh, calling police on black people. Well, she has been identified. The white woman who called the police on black people enjoying a barbecue in Oakland, California has gone viral and of course, countless memes created. And while she tried to police people, she's definitely become a laughing stock of the internet. But because she had on those sunglasses, her identity has not been revealed until now, and thanks to the mighty resources of Twitter researchers, she is now a host household name. Her name is Dr. Jennifer Schulte, and she is associated with Stanford University. It isn't clear if she teaches there or if she is just alumni. According to what appears to be now a deleted LinkedIn page, she is a doctor of philosophy, PhD, focused in chemical engineering from the university. Uh, speaking of how education does not necessarily mean that you have manners or any feelings for humanity uh, and how quick Twitter will find out who you are, a New Yorker's racist rant goes viral and people have identified who he is and his business is getting dragged with one star Yelp reviews. Twitter identified this man, Aaron Schlossberg, as a New York based lawyer. Schlossberg was captured on a smartphone video yelling at employees at the restaurant Fresh Kitchen in Midtown Manhattan. His complaint was that the workers were speaking Spanish to customers and he wasn't happy. Check out this video. Clients at your yeah, staff yeah. is speaking Spanish to customers when they no, should be speaking. Very violent. I mean, speaking sometimes very violent. they do. Very yeah. 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 Very Every person I listen to, he's spoken, he's spoken, she's speaking it. It's America. They, the, yeah. You're, you're, yeah. You're, yeah. You're, yeah. You're, yeah. You're, yeah. He's very ignorant. He's very ignorant. And he shouldn't be allowed. I will be following up. And my guess is they're not documented. So my next call is to ICE to have any sort of a out of my country. If they have the balls to come here and live off of my money, I pay for their welfare. I pay for their ability to be here. The least they can do is speak English. 
Because of people like you, our nation. Honey, I'm calling ice. ice. Call ice. ice. So that they can Maybe you shouldn't eat that sandwich today. Take a break from the food. Maybe you should get hit by a car, you piece of shit. Whew. Beyond just facing the wrath of Twitter, his law firm, the law office of Aaron M. Schlossberg, has been flooded with one-star reviews on Yelp with, commenta with com commenters calling him a vile racist and surfacing other incidents of disparaging remarks that he's made in public toward minority groups. So many reviews were flooding his Yelp page that Yelp had to jump in to say that the listing was undergoing an active cleanup. According to Yelp, when a business attracts posts because it has made waves in the news, the company works really hard to remove both positive and negative posts that appear to be motivated more by the news coverage itself than the reviewer's personal consumer experience with the business. According to the Center for Responsive Politics, Schlossberg donated $500 to the presidential campaign of Donald Trump, whom we all know gained hella supporters with his promise to crack down on immigration and build a wall between the United States and Mexico. The video from 2016 has surfaced showing that his, this isn't his first time doing this. Many in New York are calling for the suspension and or disbarment of his law license as a result of his conduct. In entertainment news, Smokey Robinson has been in the news. The biggest reason is that he is leading the call for copyright reform in the Senate. Uh, the 78-year-old music industry legend says his message is simple, that musicians who recorded before February 15th in 1972 deserve to be compensated the same way as those who recorded after that date. Robinson was one of several witnesses testifying before senators in support of the Music Modernization Act, the bipartisan legislation which passed last month in the House would update music licensing and copyright law and reform the way royalties are collected. A loophole, Robinson said, denies music copyright holders of recordings made before 1972 the same federal protections as those afforded to copyright holders after songs were released after, which obviously compensates newer artists better as the law currently stands. Robinson said that yeah, a lot, he knows a lot of musicians, producers, and writers who have fallen on hard times and could really use that money. Robinson wasn't the only famous face at the Tuesday hearing. Uh, Mary Wilson, one of the founding members of the Supremes, waved and even did a classic stop in the name of love hand motion as Senator Dianne Feinstein, a Democrat from California, mentioned she was in the audience along with singers Darling Love and Dion Warwick. But even as all of this is happening on Capitol Hill, a clip of Smokey Robinson has been going viral on the social media interwebs. Check this out. <laughs> Congress, I'm gonna need y'all to fix whatever loophole is forcing this man to do this during performances. This man who has written and sang so many classic hits should not be forced to sell geriatric sex to make ends meet. <laughs> Uh, today does mark the one year since the Justice Department authorized a special probe and appointed special investigator Robert Mueller to look into Trump's possible collusion with the Russians to interfere with the 2016 presidential election. No long story here. Just letting y'all know it's been a year and Trump, he put out a congratulations on Twitter if you'd like to look at his side comments. But since we are on the topic of presidencies, y'all should know that an Asian man has pretty much put in a bid for running for U.S. president in 2020. His name is Andrew Yang, and while other politicians with more familiar names are kind of hemming and hawing about throwing their hat in the ring for the presidential elections, Yang may be the first to declare his candidacy. Yang, who was born in New York in 1975 and whose parents immigrated from Taiwan, says he is running for president as a Democrat in 2020 because he fears for the future of this country. Yang is not 
a career politician. He is an entrepreneur and an author who is serious about his bid for president when Andrew realized that new technology like artificial intelligence threatened to eliminate one third of all American jobs. He says that he knew he had to do something. One of the most intriguing points in Yang's platform is that providing a guaranteed income for every American between the ages of 18 and 64 at the rate of $1,000 per month. He is quick to remind everyone that he is not a career politician, but he is an entrepreneur who understands the economy. Yang studied economics and political science at Brown University, and he also holds a law degree from Columbia. He founded a national education company that grew to become number one in the country, and after getting married, he sold that company and used that money to found another organization called Venture for America, and it helps entrepreneurs create jobs in cities uh, like Baltimore, Detroit, Pittsburgh, and Cleveland. The company was very successful and it helped hundreds of new business people and created thousands of jobs. Besides universal basic income, he has position on other issues including Medicare for all, paid family leave, fighting climate change, gun control, and increasing teachers' salaries. He's making plans for the early primaries in New Hampshire and Iowa. He says next year he will implement this guaranteed income plan that he calls a freedom dividend of $1,000 a month to each of those states to demonstrate how the proposal will work, not to mention the publicity he would get from it. He is seeking nominations for the recipients. Asian Americans, though currently only 5.8% of the U.S. population, are the fastest growing racial minority in the United States and are expected to make up one tenth of all voters by 2044. Uh, despite this impressive growth, however, Asian Americans have one of the most dismal voter turnout rates, 47%, compared to 66% for black voters and 64% for non-Hispanic white voters. If I can make an educated guess here, I'd say that um, Asian Americans will turn out in super numbers should Yang be on the ballot. All right, that's pretty much all the stories I have for y'all today on this Thursday. Got a few comments here from that what I can see. See, we have relevant comments on here. Alexander Burks on Facebook says that colonizers pick and choose who they want to talk crazy to. <laughs> that is very accurate. That is very accurate. I've not seen uh, lay people be real funky fresh with certain <laughs> types of people. I've not yeah. seen it. Nah, they, you know, and, and notice though, like this is the thing that gets me about that. They did not be specific that he was speaking to women. That oh, he was yeah, that's very right. clearly going back and forth with a woman. Yes. And so that in itself, a, 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 let's let's get the bigotry aside mm -hmm. he was being a complete misogynistic a-hole yeah. to a woman yeah and so they know good and damn well who they want to target you ain't finna talk to novato like that no you're not you're not <laughs> no you're not you you're not yeah punched in the mouth mouth Let's see. Um, Alexander Burks make another comment. This sounds like a pitch for student council. Wait, <laughs> the uh, Yang's uh, resume? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> uh, I would say accurate. Ramon Javier Benitez says, I fight people when I hear Smokey Robinson's name. Why do you want to fight people? There's, but there's actually a, a YouTube link. Oh, okay. Uh, Let me, if I click that, I won't see no more comments. So yeah. Well, I beat people like I'm dead serious. I hate Smokey Robinson so much that I started uh, this series of, of videos where anyone says Smokey Robinson, I beat him up. What? Yeah, I hate Smokey Robinson. I, he is he's a great writer. Uh -huh. I hate his that shaky tears of a class. He had great music. He That's, had great songwriting, yes, but that shaky, never been a fan of that voice. That shaky ass whisper that register. Weak. Oh Why do you God. still have the, the the thing up on Asian Smokey Robinson? Oh, Why do he you does look like, like <laughs> I can't. I can't do this with them. He look like Asian Smokey. <laughs> I can't do this with y'all. I can't. I cannot. What about the AIDS comment? I'm going back up. I'm going back up. Joshua McCorn makes the comment. Her name is AIDS, spelled A-I-D-S, and he should have known better. You're right. Should have known better. She looked crazy in those pictures. I think they met online, like a dating, online dating site. So that's... 
Yeah, I'm like, why haven't you blocked her? That's the part Cause I didn't. Fun. Cause, Cause it's fun. Because it's fun. He's showing his boys. You don't block because it's fun. When you're bored, you have fun. I, I don't oh think a lot God. of guys block game is real strong. I, I think that's a woman thing. Really? I, yeah, I think it's a woman thing. Because guys, listen, you got to be, you got to be like nutsy bobo. And yes. <laughs> You gotta be nutsy bobo. And that's only a, a group of black people who say nutsy bobo. Yeah, I've never heard this before. You never heard nutsy I've bobo? Never heard nutsy bobo. Oh my god. Corian! <laughs> Corian, are you out there? Please tell her about nutsy bobo. I'm tired of, of her lame ass vernacular. Nutsy bobo is a real thing. It's true. Uh, is he about? related to Boo Boo the Fool? Yes. Oh. Yes, he is. Okay. <laughs> yes, he is. All right, okay. They're first cousins. <laughs> <laughs> On their father's side, they are close. <laughs> oh, my God. This is the... Nutsy Bobo and Boo Boo the Fool. <laughs> Corian said, block. We just cut you off. <laughs> right. Exactly. I don't know. In the if... back of your mind, is always that chance. Yeah. In the future. Because we don't fear... Like, you, you, you got to look at it, right? Okay, okay. You all have fear. Like, you got to yes. have a real reason why you should block because a dude can roll up on you. And But I'm going to say this, though, too. Mm -hmm. I don't because anybody can shoot you and kill you. You know, anybody right. can drop on you. But I don't think you should do that because you should see what somebody's mind state is. Right. So you'd be like, all right, so this dude is now talking about, I'm going to find you, I'm going to do this. Because if you block him, you don't know. There is no evidence and there is no warning that this dude is coming for you. So That's put it on hide at the very least. On hide, okay. Like mm. mm. Okay. I would think women would be more likely to block the ones you know you can't say no to. You just gotta act like they don't exist so you don't, you know, fall for the okie doke again. You know, that one guy your friends be like, Why does she keep going back? And you're like, you just block them. You can't, you can't, don't do it. Anywho, uh, I think that's all, yeah? Yeah. Is that it for you? I think that's I think that's all the comments. Uh after this, you know what it is. It's Thursday. True Baller Thursday yeah. with J. Cole is it, the Reggie Mathis, and their special guest, The Revolution, coming on right after the end of Prime News. And for those who don't know, Fry Fi Night is still going on on Friday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You get the worst science fiction film of all time. It'll be streaming on our Facebook page at 10 p.m. Eastern. Even though last week wasn't a science fiction film, it was like an old black film. Everyone loved that one. We only got two episodes left in Fry Fi Night season, so make sure you you guys watch that. With that, I'm Trezene, host of Prime News. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you on Monday.